everybody, Greg Davies here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create web graph charts using Adobe Firefox. Now, you probably know Photoshop, and Photoshop is great, I love it, it's the best photo editing program, but Firefox was designed specifically to deal with clean graphics and optimize graphics for the web. And it's much better when it comes to creating web graphics, so that's why that's what I'm going to be using. And you can download a free trial of Firefox, just sign up at adobe.com, and you can download a free one-month trial. So when you open Firefox, you're going to see the chart thing that you see right here. I'm going to create a new document. Uh, Firefox uses an English version of DMV format, which is convenient file format. And you can use it with all the information in your file, all the layers, everything. It's pretty much like the Photoshop DLC format. Okay. Canvas style. I want to uh, all my web graphics to come stored inside this document. And I need to do it here. So I'm going to use 5,000 pixels on the right. 5,000 pixels on the high, click on here. Resolution doesn't matter for this one, I'm fine with 16,000 pixels. Change the color, actually you can change it all the time. I'm gonna go with uh, transparent, click OK. And now I have a brand new document, I want to fill in the fill. Okay, you need a size folder for every graphic on the web rack, so I'm gonna go to folder. The size folder name should be something like photomedia.com. size folder, create a new folder for my Firefox document, and I'm going to go to Firefox, Finding also could be something like Photo Mania, but again I'm going to use the standard size one, file format is not PNG, so I'm going to click OK, save, now you can see the Firefox preview interface show you everything you need to know when you get there but let's start working now because that's how you can actually learn stuff by doing right so I open a new view everything will be on the screen and you're gonna master Firefox very quickly it's gonna start you from scratch just like this so let's get started and you can see a web graphic you can use and uh, web graphics are typically important for people stumble and fall and yet it's one of the easiest things to create because once you understand where to find good graphics and recognize them the internet is crammed with great graphics that you can make and look at. And even Picasso was saying, he said, good art is copy, good art is steal. So I'm going to show you how to get a design, edit it, make it to your own, make it different, and it just stands out. One of the best places to find a great web graphic, better than just searching for anything on the internet, is templatemonster.com. They deliver the best templates on the web, just like they say, and they really do. They have templates created by the best web design studios in the world. So if you're on the site, you can search by category and find templates that are designed specifically for your market. Or you can even search by color. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to search for web design template. Apply. You can actually buy templates and get a cool design, but I'm not going to buy any templates now. I want to see what you will pay. So I'm trying to get a top layer, but this one is pretty cool. Check it out. Okay, this one is perfect for my style, so I'm going to copy the header image, paste it into Firefox, right click on the image, hold, hold down your cursor to on the web and you copy the image now if you can't copy the image for some reason maybe it's a flash file or whatever then you can check for your theme and the preset keyboard there is a theme called theme screen and it basically captures the entire screen and you actually can press comma shift 3 to capture the entire screen or comma shift 4 to capture the part of the screen you want to select and once you've done that just copy the image Firefox. Now press Ctrl V, turn it to the left, and then paste it back in, and zoom in a bit. Now there are a lot of different ways to do it in Firefox. You can use the magnification function right 
Him, and He will be with us. And we love you. Body, soul, breath, strong hold, love. Talk to you again soon. So much love for Mark and for us. We thank you for that painful truth that we need to say as well. Same old thing. But make sure you still have the object of knowing from Him, because a spider web is going to zoom in in the middle of the spot of the object, and it's not going to find you unless you're in the middle of the canvas. So make sure you still have trust that that web will find us. But you can also use the zoom tool here to stretch these and to click and drag them to get rid of them. Same old thing. Thank you again for this. Cool. And if you need some real sense, you can tell us what kind of junk I talked about sticking to the floor up here. You can send me back out by clicking there. Or you can also press the tab key and hide so all your junk is concealed. Or by pressing the F key five times, you can add some cool keynotes. And these are pretty handy if you need some real sense. Now I'm going to edit some ideas. First I'm going to give you the little bar. And then I'm going to show you how to use that, what we're going to do with it as well. But before you do anything, make sure you still have your image first. Some designers are saying you can grab the back and mark it with that. And if you're applying the spiders, still grab the object in front of you, select my image, then grab the object with that mark tool, and select the other one in front of you. Yeah, I zoom like this, that's gonna make your uh, image go wide part.
And that's pretty cool because the idea of having like somewhere you can like sleep kind of good or lay back and kind of just relax. But on the other side, you get this, which is kind of cool. So let's see. So I can put this on.
Here we have Ryan Hunt, and then Jeremy Roth, and Jeremy Rahm, and then Robert Thomas is the editor, Brad Thomas is the head of the Daily Mail Striker, Jim Ryan is the blogger, and then we have Jeff Cooper and Tim Ryan work on it. And the cool thing is, you can even leave uh, changes and messages on the blog without it backing your actual blog address. I mean, you can always go back and find your Striker, or if you delete them, they will still be accessible, believe it or not. But you can also apply stop to the blog address, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But you can't stop the entire stack if you don't wish, because once you apply a stop to an object, it's ready to just get rid of it. It's not called a filter, but it's more like that. So I'll hold down the Alt key, and it'll automatically do that. Go back to the stack, and I'll go to stop the blog address right here. Then I'll go to my stop file. And here you can see a lot of recent stocks on there. I'm going to check out the delete file. looks good and if you take a look at the bubble on the right hand you will realize that the style is some of just recent appeals strokes slide changes and footer and file size which means I can edit that style and after that I can always change my editing style by clicking on this little dot down here so as you can see here you can apply stop to email address not to email address even to footer wall changes so keep that in mind and from here I'll delete this entire stack
get this little arm button that we have here. If you want to get rid of it, you can either change the edge to the part down here at the bottom panel, or you can go to your work bench here and you can snap it here. I don't have any left for you, but if you do that, you can change it using my left key. angle and go to my comment menu and see what we have here. We have our button here. Let's go to the top trim stem. Cool. Keep it alive. And let's change the speed to slow drag. Actually, use Shift Shield because you can change the speed. The speed is just a second for whatever reason it is here. Start from the beginning.
ね、すごいね、だから、ガキでもスワッグ、ディフェンダーズもスワッグ、あの、あんまり聞いてもハーフね、ディフェンダーズとバスケットして、だってオスワー、もうしまいしまいだけど、すごいね、だってディスライブ、ナッツディスライブ、カレージ、ジョニー・ディアイズ、ノーフィルストロークとなるんだ。そのディアヴェンティッジ、ガキでしたね、あんまり聞いてもね、ディフェンダーズ、ヒーロー、There is no better than him in quality. And so in this case, the best around is Steve Nikodim, you know. And there is no in the ball for the best around. But you can do that with a big man like this guy, you know. Like this for me, that's an example of mine. So this is a big man in. And uh, like any photograph you can make, it's made of a bunch of pixels. And if I started zooming it, sooner or later I could see the pixel. And it would be fuzzy. So I can make it any larger than it is. I can make it smaller. I can make it any larger, so that's the difference between a basket and a street lamp. And now I'm gonna show you how to work with uh, Spectre. I grab my pencil, and the way pencils work, you can create two different types of lines. You can create a straight line or a curved line. To create a straight line, I simply click once to get the pen started, and I just drag across. I click again, and I change direction. I make a line, for example. If I hold down the shift key, I can create, for example, a vertical line. And if I want to make some curves, I just click and then drag and I want to drag to get a curve. I want something else. I want to make it further in my design. I want to make it more curved. So I can click again and create a different curve or I make a straight line. I can click again. I make a straight line. back to the beginning I can click one more time and create a path and I just do okay change the color make it red for example Grab my rectangle tool and create okay. a bunch of curves. I grab my stopwatch and make it blue. Okay. Also, I can grab my speed tool and zoom.
basketball card from the Florida Buckeyes, which is absolutely yellow. I don't know why, but it's my best year. I know the Buckeyes are going to win it this year. So I choose yellow. I grab my specs tool. I want to see what's in the back. Copy that to my SD card.
Exercise here gives one more button as well as some other things. also find the button on the internet, edit it, make it your own. I'm not sure how to do that in Love, but I could have added a check mark, not on the button, because I know it happens in Love as well. So I'll go to Google, and I'll type in check mark, and search for Ninja. Thank you. 
and that's what is the only free format in Quint, but the best websites in the world don't have any music modules at all. We can also create a whole label of that using the Quint, and I'm sure how to do that as well, but I think that in Zoom it works, not in Fireworks because it's much better to do that in Angular. In Quint, I have all the graphics I need for my website, so I'm just going to export a single image and split it up. I switch back to my layer style and grab my slice tool, fill it with white, drop it down to the same lettering, then I'm going to set my slice to proper size and proper is all stored on top of that layer and I rename my slice to layer and I use lower case letters only because I don't want that to get called in so I export it to the web back to my view here I go to the optimize button and I want to export it to PDB 24 format and you probably know GPEG is the most popular format on the web and GPEG really is a good choice for photographic images, but it doesn't handle solid solids that well. Use GPEG for photographic images, great, but use PNG24 for web graphics, or PDB32 for web graphics that have a transparent background. My header here says no transparent background, so I go with uh, PNG24, and I export an image, slice it slice it slice, Contour-based format, and I see that I have a rectangular slice. Again, the photo that I just got inside my uh, slice folder. I create a new folder, and I name that Images. Again, I only use lowercase letters because I'm not sure all my websites are not in that uh, folder, so I click Web. Create a file name for the actual slice name. I've already named it, so I click Save. And that's it. Now I'm going to export this bug image as well. But I move my assets to the right because I have to keep a track of what I'm doing with them. So I'm also going to go with a transparent background. I go to my asset folder. see this slice is probably not public version yet, so I don't have to worry about it. It's in a DM underscore folder. DM stands for button. If you have a lot of buttons, you can use them to tag them. Okay, so this is PNG for image format. I call it PNG for a transparent background. That is it. But if you want to export an image where you have transparent background, make sure your thumbnail is transparent as well, so you can keep track of what you have in the image. My thumbnail is transparent, so I go back to my slice, export Control-Shift Format, PNG for rectangular slice. On my website, I'm using Quint for all my images folder. Save. And the same button will come up. I go to my second one, select it, select the file name out. Background like that. I move those images to the 
that's going on with the Canon and Sony Flash phones. But this way, I actually show my head off as well. So like, I don't really need to have this big stack of camera. I can actually kind of like flash it wider. So I can just kind of like flash it wider as well. Still zoom you over to that website, but I need just one more here. Big black phone. Now that big black phone has a small black phone. So here I have that browser where I can actually go over, of course. So I can actually click on bookmark and I can just tap this here as well. So for that bootleg, we should show that big black phone down here. And uh, not every website has a big black phone, so you know, those of you like me, you can skip this part. But if you want a website that doesn't have a big black phone, you can just tap it as well. But I mean, here it's just kind of global, so I can actually click on OK. Turn on the web logo. I'll grab a copy of my logo. Put it on my mouse key. Tap it down right here. And I can just kind of like scroll down. Now the big black phone has to be a 32 pixels wide and a 32 pixels top and here. So like here it's a little wide. Bye.